Assalamualaikum and good day to everyone. Welcome to our class, Inferential Statistics. The topic that we will discuss today is sufficient statistics, which will be in your chapter two. The session will start with an introduction to sufficient statistics. Before we proceed with the topic of sufficient statistics, let us revise the concept of estimator. How you want to determine the quality of estimators? As we learned before, we know that we have three properties. The first one is unbiasedness, consistency, and efficient. To determine whether theta h is unbiased, so you have to show that expected value of theta h is equals to theta. Secondly, if you want to show that it is consistent, you need to show that variance theta h approaching zero as n approaching infinity. The last one, if you want to choose or to determine whether this one is efficient, if you have two theta, theta one and theta two, you have to compare the variance. And if you want to show that it is uniformly minimum variance unbiased estimator, you need to use the kramer rao lower bound. Sufficiency is a property of an estimator that relates to the amount of information it contains. Normally, what we do is listing all the observation of x1, x2, xn. But now, we only express the observation in terms of its sample mean and also sample variance. So this is called as statistic, which is a function of the random sample. And this statistic T is a form of data reduction. Thus, statistician looks for ways of reducing a set of data so that this data can be more easily understood without losing the meaning associated with the entire set of observation. Normally, we assume that all available information about the parameter is contained in the observation. We know that the estimator we obtain are always function of the observation, such as your sample mean, sample variance, or your sample standard deviation. So this process can be thought as compressing the original observation data, where we have n observation or n numbers, but after compressing, we only have one number. So the best case is that this compression result contains the same amount of information as the information contained in the end observation. Therefore, we call this statistic as sufficient statistics. So let us define sufficient statistic. We say T is a sufficient statistic if the statistician who knows the value of T can do just as good in estimating the unknown parameter data as the statistician who knows the entire random sample. In this case, let's say T is your X bar. The entire random sample, that means you have x1, x2, xn. So if you have all observation, you can compute your x bar using the formula. But if you have t, t is only can represent your entire data set. Formally, a statistic T is said to be sufficient for theta if the conditional distribution of x1, x2, xn given T does not depend on theta for any value of T. In other words, given the value of T, we can gain normal knowledge about theta 
from knowing more about the probability distribution of x1, x2, xn. We could keeping only t and throwing all the xi without losing any information. So let us refer to definition 2.1. Let S1, S2, Sn be a random sample of size n with probability function fx theta. And let t be a statistic whose PDF is g t theta. So t here is a sufficient statistic for theta if and only if we have the conditional distribution fx1, x2, sn given t, where t is the sufficient statistic, is equals to the joint PDF fx1 theta, fx2 theta, fxn theta, divided by the sufficient statistic or divided by PDF of the sufficient statistic. So this will result in each x1, x2, sn. So if your age does not depend upon theta, then we call t as a sufficient statistic for theta. So let us refer to example for Bernoulli trial. Consider a random sample of x1, x2, sn of size n from the Bernoulli distribution. We have the probability function theta to the power x, 1 minus theta to the power 1 minus x. We want to show that y is equal to summation xi is a sufficient statistic. Okay, or in this case, you can replace showing that t equals to summation si is a sufficient statistic. So we will use the conditional probability concept. So by independence, the joint distribution of the random sample is given as product of your theta to the power xi, 1 minus theta to the power 1 minus xi. So if we simplify, we can write down theta to the power summation xi, 1 minus theta to the power n minus summation xi. So this product is the same thing if you write the product for the likelihood function. So if we have the joint PDF, fx1, x2, sn, and also the sufficient statistic t, so it can be written as probability x1 equals to x1, x2 equals to x2, xn equals to xn, and t equals to t. Note that t is equal to summation si, which is x1 plus x2 plus x3 up to plus xn. So it can also be written as probability x1 equals to x1, x2 equals to x2, xn minus 1 equals to xn minus 1, and then xn is equal to t minus summation si, where your i is equal to 1 up to n minus 1. So since the random sample are independent, then we can multiply the probability. So this one will result as theta x1, 1 minus theta, 1 minus x1, theta x2, 1 minus theta, 1 minus x2, theta to the power t minus summation is i, i equals to 1 up to n minus 1, and 1 minus theta to the power 1 minus t minus summation is i. Okay, so simplify this one, we will have theta to the power t, 1 minus theta to the power n minus t. Okay, so that's mean you have minus x1, minus x2, minus summation is i, so cancel out this one. Okay, you have 1, 1, 1, so you have n, and then minus t. So since t equals the summation xi has the binomial distribution, so we need to know what is the probability function for binomial distribution. So the probability function for binomial is given as n choose t, where t is summation xi, theta to the power t, 1 minus theta, n minus t, and your t take values from 0 up to n. So replace it in conditional distribution. Okay, it will result you as 1 over n choose t, which this one is your h x1 s to sn, which does not depend on the parameter theta. 
Therefore, we conclude that T equals to summation Si is a sufficient statistic. So this ends your part one, an introduction to sufficient statistics.